Excellent. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Just tell me when you're going to start recording. Oh, I did. Okay, great. Okay, so, so you're all embroiders, you all have embroidery machines, and you're here because you're interested in maybe making money with your machine. Um, I have a lot of machine owners in the stores that make money uh, with their machines. Um, some people decide to get into doing machine embroidery for money because they need to support their habit, because they're a hobbyist and they've really gotten into doing a lot of embroidery and they really enjoy it, and they decide we go ahead and sell some of my embroidery or do it for other people uh, to make some money, which at that point, when you're doing it, making money, you make it into a business. You can write off your supplies, write off your machinery. Um, and so most people that get into embroidery as a business are embroiderers already. Or a lot of you guys are hobbyists already um, that decide, you know what, I'm going to take the leap and get into doing it uh, to make some money. Um, and uh, if you want to go ahead and go to the next slide, uh, Jeremiah, we'll just go to the next one. So when you start a business, and Melissa, you've already done this, um, it means that you create a rough plan, you acquire a target, and start selling to that target. Really, in the simplest form, that's what you do. So it's important um, when you start a business, you decide what your target is, and you're going to start selling to that target. And that's why a lot of tradesmen, a lot of hobbyists, and people that kind of start businesses uh, don't necessarily start out as business people, but they kind of fall into it and decide um, just by circumstance they're going to start making money doing what they love to do or doing what they're good at doing. So sales is everything in business. The sooner you're selling your services and products, the faster you'll be successful. So being a salesperson or selling um, sometimes has a negative connotation. Some people say, I don't want to be a salesperson. I don't want to sell to people, it seems dirty, maybe you feel guilty about taking money for things, but in economics, transaction, when you take money for goods and services that you provide to somebody else that they don't specialize in and they don't understand, it's actually a beneficial thing. You're getting money for those services, they're getting your services and goods. If it's a service and good that they can really benefit from, you're really giving them a lot of value, especially if they don't know what your trade is and they don't specialize in what you're specialized in. So making a transaction happen with two parties is a very positive thing actually for both parties. As long as there's a value transfer. As long as what you're doing for them has value and they're giving you value back as a business person. And that's created with sales. So actually being a professional salesperson is one of the best things in the world because it benefits everybody. As long as we're professional about it. So sales is everything in business. You want to pick a target and sell to it. Um, why embroidery as a business? Uh, you can actually own your own business. It's a profitable industry. You make money for you. There's people that have made millions in the embroidery business. Being embroiderers, being professional embroiderers, there's a lot of opportunity out there. There's a lot of demand for embroidery. Uh, even in communities like ours and here in Casper, Wyoming. Um, it's, uh, you, you can set goals when you work for yourself. You can set goals. You're not restricted by an hourly wage. Uh, a lot of people work very hard for an hourly wage and they feel restricted because they can't, they hit the ceiling and they can't get past that hourly wage. But when you work for yourself, the sky's the limit. Uh, you can work very hard and make your own amount of money. Uh, embroidered products are used by almost everywhere, everybody. The potential is unlimited. People embroider shirts, shirts, caps, hats, bags, shoes now. There's shoe jigs where you can embroider on shoes. Uh, you name it, embroiders embroider on it. Leather, plastics metals even I've seen uh, everything so flexible hours part-time full-time you got a family you got responsibilities working for yourself especially out of a home-based business um, means that you have flexibility um, and you can start with a minimal investment really embroidery as a business is one of the lowest cost investments to get started in a business um, than anything out there uh, like you guys actually already have the machinery you guys already have embroidery machines. Uh, your cost and investment to get started uh, can be very minimal, and in some ways, if you get creative, could be zero in some cases uh, to get started and get going. Um, or for less than $1,000 a month. Some people pay thousands of dollars a month to start businesses. Uh, home embroiderers, in some cases, are paying under $300 a month to get started. So possible embroidered items, robes, caps, backpacks, sweatsuits, visors, pet apparel, uh, I see this a lot, so like dog collars, laptop cases, uh, that's good. 
sports uniforms, if you find teams and you get good at doing like appliques, sports numbers, things like that, headbands, dog collars, children's clothing, work uniforms, so if you get plugged into a uniform company, something like that. Maybe. They now have dog hats also. Dog hats, yeah. Or the dog sweaters, the little sweaters that no. they wear. It says wiener on the no, side they have or something. Dog hats. <laughs> That See, if you're creative, if you're creative and you have a product, you can really, you know, especially if you know your niche people, like if you know, like, they're gun people, dog people, um, you name it, artists, whatever, you know, so if you find a niche that you're embroidering for and you're marketing to, um, that's the best thing with a small business. Customized products for a niche customer is the best thing for a small business. Um, seat covers, baby bibs, dance wear, golf shirts, leather products. So around Wyoming, I get a lot of requests from leather sewing machines. People love to sew leather in Wyoming. Uh, so you should probably learn how to embroider on leather if you want to sell some products uh, to niche customers in Wyoming for sure. And four needles are great too, like four needle machines for like leather jacket backs and stuff. Powers right through it. You can sew right through that leather. Yep. You can embroider around that leather. There's certain types of embroidery that work better on leather um, than other types of embroidery depending on the fill stitching and the type of stitching. Um, which we can talk about in other classes. Pillowcases, scrubs, jackets, towels. Uh, we were just looking at some towel samples. Um, you know, like putting the topping over the top, stabilizing it properly on the back. Towels are a great gift item. Um, there's different qualities of towels too. If you go to get towels to embroider, maybe for special events, shows, things like that. Um, bags, pants, stockings, and shoes. Anything you can think of, basically. So. Um, so you want to find your focus. So brainstorming ideas on what to embroider on is fun. Making samples is fun, and I, I highly encourage it. You want to make samples, run your machine, uh, embroider on different things, and then find a focus. Um, unless you're saying you have an Etsy store already, which is great. Um, you've started that. Uh, what do you focus on with your Etsy store? Um, I make hooded bath towels with an applique on the hood. Awesome. That's a really cool, specific item. It has a functional use. Put it bath um, towels in the apple Nice. Mm -hmm. So you make a small one for babies and then Yeah, I cut I'll cut the hood um, generally about ten inches. Okay. So it's a little bit of a bigger hood. Okay. And then some people that want like an infant then I'll cut that down maybe to eight. Okay. So it's not too big and hanging over. And then adults, maybe eleven inches. Just give them a little bit more room. But I, I sell quite a few just regular towel hooded for children, um, but I have also sold quite a few adult because I want them for the hot tubs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so the embroidery, the embellishment probably changes for kids versus adults, right? And Not really. Oh, okay. You know, we've got Star Wars <laughs> themed, we've got yeah, you know, that's... Alice in Wonderland. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, Winnie, Winnie the, the Pooh, Winnie the sure. Pooh. Star Wars I is mean, pretty timeless. That's, yeah. And if I don't have it, then I encourage them to ask if I can get that. Sure. I do a lot of custom orders. That way I don't have a huge overhead. Excellent. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, custom orders. Is really I don't want to stitch something that I can't sell. Right. Definitely. Um, so eBay is really good too. Um, those are like heirloom items or memorabilia kind of thing. Craigslist. Uh, Craigslist is a good way to market to niche customers, not necessarily to sell uh, your embroidery, but maybe offer services on Craigslist. Um, you can also maybe list items or put pictures of samples, but in general I would just say to find customers. Um, clubs, uh, for some of, for, well, none, I mean some people have current businesses where they might have customer bases, maybe you guys you know other business owners are running a business and um, you want to market to those customers as well, your embroidery um, products. Um, small businesses, um, just like my shop, I have a customer in Cheyenne who bought a multi machine from me and her first order was my shop and she made aprons for us that said that had our logo on them for my technicians. Um, so they all had branded uh, logos. So just something like that, if you see a business with a need, um, a lot of times a business owner like me is very busy, I don't have time to look for that kind of stuff, but I totally want it if I see it. Um, if I see my logo on something my staff can wear, I want it for sure. Especially if you see small businesses that have branding in their small business. They definitely have a logo, they put some time into it, or they paid someone to make it, they really care about their branding. And I know because I have. So if you see that in a small business and you go, oh, that guy really cares about his branding, let's go check out what his employees are wearing. 
um, that's low hanging fruit. That's a, that's a really easy sale, uh, especially if you just go ahead and make them a sample and show them what you can do for them. If you want hats, shirts, um, aprons, um, maybe even tote bags or something like that if they have like a high end merchandise they sell in a tote bag or something. So just get ideas going with that. Small businesses, organizations, uh, like clubs. So like like Elks Club or what's another one? What's Go like down a, to like your local gym and see if they want their towels embroidered. Gyms, that, that's a really good small business one. Um, you know, as far as clubs are concerned, um, you know, any sort of group that gets together, maybe they pay dues. Um, embroider the cloth napkins for the petroleum club. Golf towels. Golf Soft towels. towels. Oh, yeah. that order coming in for sure. Towels. That's great. Nice. Yeah. Um, so like a go like a golf clubhouse mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, that's really good. Any sort of clubs or groups, masons, stuff like that. Um, so trade shows is another great way to make money. I was talking to somebody about trade shows a couple weeks ago. As far as embroidery is concerned. Um, there is a manufacturer uh, rep for a big machine and he's talking about some of his customers who some of them go to shows um, set up and do custom embroidery for the whole show uh, especially if you have a domestic multifunction machine uh, that's pretty portable usually it comes in a case you can roll around and pack up uh, or like your four needle machine it's really easy to pick up um, if you have two people you want to handle it on both sides it's pretty awkward to carry one uh, if you have an 880, make sure, yeah, get the luggage. If you have the luggage, Come on. yeah, use the luggage, call for the husband, have him help you pack it up, handle it with care if there's a touch screen on it. Uh, but at a trade show, if you're set up, you have your blanks ready to go, you have some order sheets ready to go, some invoices. Hey, what can I customize for you? What do you want? You know, um, cater to their needs at the show, whatever that show is. Like if it's a gun show, is there some sort of gun item, straps? webbing you can embroider for them that has holsters on it. Um, you know, the items that you're selling with the embellishment are going to be a big part of the profit center of your sales is in addition to the embellishment you're customizing for them as well. Uh, so shows are a great way to do it. Uh, that same guy I was telling you guys about it told me that his, some of his um, customers that do trade shows, um, they paid for their machine in a couple months. Um, and we're talking about $10,000 machines. Uh, because they went and did a series of eight shows in two months where they were knocking down three thousand four thousand dollars in profit in each show because they were going to these shows where there's a lot of people coming you know you from five thousand ten thousand people a sizable show it was worth it to travel there set up in a booth a couple hundred bucks for a booth space and do custom embroidery for a couple days um, so looking for specialty shows and thinking about niche markets like that can pay for your machine like that you can pay for it right away. Uh, it takes a little bit of hustle, but it's worth it for sure. Um, bazaars, those are like church bazaars. Um, spelled wrong. Yeah, no, no, it is spelled wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I have a typo in the presentation. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of a so, leader is he? I know, right? There's so many opportunities, though, right? There's so many things to do. I'm a scholar. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a scholar. So start with a plan and know that it can change. Uh, you always want to start with a plan, and so I'm going to do some more classes for you guys if you want to keep coming, um, based that are planning classes to make a plan um, and then execute the plan. The thing about uh, business plans is that they always change because once you start engaging in business, you're going to start learning things right away. Things always change. Uh, customers always change. Uh, your primary embroidery product may change. Um, you may set out doing like uh, hooded towels, or you may set out doing um, you know, just uh, embroidered t-shirts or caps, or because maybe you have a customer when you get started, somebody hears that you do embroidery and so they want your services, so you start doing that, but then you find out you can do something else and there's another customer and so you, so that focus can change and that can change how you buy product, it can change how you price product. Um, your primary focus can change in that respect. Uh, the most important idea is that you start, if you're going to start doing it, it's something that you really love to do, you love embroidery, you're going to do it, you have some great ideas. The most important thing is that you begin doing it, and then you adapt as you learn about your customer, your market, and what you enjoy. So um, what I'm going to do is offer a series of classes for you guys on these things like focusing on things like Etsy stores, um, which I think I'll probably do right away since you're already doing that. Um, things like uh, pricing product, how to price it the right way, including things like um, your digitizing, your embellishment, and then also the blank, um, and building a pricing package, what your time is worth, uh, why minimums are important, um, things like that. Just basic 
pricing things that can help you just have a basic strategy if you're going to start. Um, and so I'll offer those, those classes to you guys for free. Um, and I'm videotaping them too, and I'm going to upload these classes onto my Dropbox system that I've shared with you guys. If you haven't gotten into it, I'll show you guys how. Have you been able to get into it, Melissa? I haven't even began to get into it. Okay. So I encourage you guys to, like, I give you these worksheets, like, take notes. I had a professor one time tell me that the best learning muscle in the body is this. It's your hand. So if, when you write things down, when you, when you hear a lecture or something, it really helps put it in your mind and remember it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to record these lectures. I'm going to upload them into my Dropbox system. I'll show you guys how to get into it and it's password protected so you can still watch them. If we talked about something or answered a question for you or something, you don't remember it. Um, so we go to the next slide. Thanks. Uh, so of course, this is my product. This is what I this is what I sell. This is what I recommend. The Baby Lock Multi Needle Machine has a camera system like your guys' machines. The scanning feature, it's multi needle like your machine, so it can switch colors, um, and it uh, it has multi function on the touch screen like your 880. Uh, so it can combine all patterns on screen, rotate, size things. 120 frames, 25 year warranty, 30 fonts, 110 designs built in. Um, this is a product that I get customers started with. I've got about a dozen customers now over the last two years that have started a business with this machine under $300 a month. Um, and with all the opportunity and everything, you can see where an investment like this is a really easy way to get into business for yourself. Um, so that's the machine that I, I try to sell. So we'll go to the next slide. So uh, what we're gonna start supplying with our business planning tools, we already offer on our machines, uh, training to get you started, warranty services for your new machine, maintenance and repair services. We include that in our machine packages normally anyway. Uh, so when you guys buy machines from us, we just do that stuff where you're always doing trainings. Uh, we're doing warranty services. We have technicians in-house. Uh, we have service trucks to deliver stuff or come out to repair stuff. Um, but in addition, we're going to start doing these planning uh, workshops. So you can do a business planning tool that we walk you through which um, I'm going to touch on. I'm going to have another presentation I'm going to go through with you guys because we're kind of even ahead of schedule. And as I talk, if you guys want to stop me, just stop me and ask a question because uh, we're already almost done with this presentation. So just interrupt me and stop me if you have a oops. question. <laughs> What's that? I said oops. Yeah, oops. <laughs> Something uh, I'll add to though is we do offer almost 24-7 support too. Um, some of you are plugged in with some of us on Facebook. Yeah. If you, um, <laughs> you can also send us messages on our Facebook page, too. That's true, yeah. Um, you can friend me on Facebook. I mean, I'm pretty open about that. Uh, you just look me up. It's Chris Blakeman. Um, Jeremiah is pretty yeah. open, too. <laughs> we are. But, but also even just our regular store Facebook page. Um, if you send us messages, typically, you know, all of us that work in the stores are are plugged into that and we get notifications. So, you know, it may be a few hours, but typically Saturday, Sunday, somebody will reply even if you have a, an immediate need. Yeah, if you guys like our Facebook page and follow it, uh, you can message us. Um, and that does, there's, we have seven admins on it now, or there's eight. There's eight administrators on our Facebook page. So if you send a message to that, like one of us is probably gonna just answer you like right away usually. What is your Facebook page? Uh, it's Blakeman Vacuum and Sewing. Yeah. If oh, you just look that up on Facebook, yeah. And there is, there's just one that covers all three stores, so there is just one Facebook page for all three stores, so. Yeah. Um, so basically, we, I have, I'm going to take you guys through a business planning tool, a marketing planning tool, a pricing strategy, um, just to name a couple things. Uh, within the marketing planning tool, we'll talk about things like Etsy, eBay, Craigslist. Um, doing shows, um, and also small clubs and organizations. So we'll kind of, in the marketing tool, we'll, we'll work through some of that stuff. So if you go to the next slide. So the time's now. If you're ready, inspired, and excited, and you already have ideas of success, then the time to start is now. If you already are an embroiderer, you're probably, already know people that say, will you embroider this thing for me, or will you do this mm -hmm. for me, or whatever. Um, the best thing to do is to just start working on it. Just start embroidering and start working towards it and talk to those people. Um, you know, begin building a business today. The, the best thing to do is if you're interested in building a business is to just start doing it. Uh, there's really, especially with something like this, if you have the equipment, there's no upfront cost. Um, and action is the cornerstone of a strong business. 
So the, the best thing to do to build the foundation of a business is to take action uh, because that's going to be the strongest thing to do. Um, and it doesn't matter how big an organization is or how small it is, action is like the most important thing. Uh, stagnation is like the worst thing. So I'm going to fire, I'm, I'll just go through the next presentation with you guys. It's a short one uh, just on getting started. Melissa, you've probably already done some of this stuff. Okay. All right. So congratulations. You guys have already got your machines. You're already interested. So uh, the first thing, if you're going to start a business, you guys uh, doing embroidery, is you want to um, think of a name for your business, obviously. So your name should be creative, should be fun, uh, and should have something to do with stitching or embroidery. So make sure it has, so your customers relate it with embroidery, uh, like mountaintop embroidery, um, putting you in stitches, or embroidery, etc. something like that. You want to try to make it fun, make it creative. Uh, there's brainstorming games you can play if you want, you know, you can mix words up, you know, think of different words like sewing, stitching, embroidering. Think of things that are personal to you, you know, um, like why, something to do with Wyoming or something to do with your hometown or something like that. Uh, especially if you're going to be marketing yourself to customers in your hometown, too. That's a good idea. What's the name of your business, Melissa? Red Rock Crafts, Wyoming. Cool. Red Rock Crafts. Because yeah. like we're surrounded by red rocks up there. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. It's personable. It has to do with sewing. It's perfect. Um, so, so you guys want to come up with a name. Uh, and the next step uh, would be to go to the IRS website and get an EIN number uh, for tax purposes. You're going to begin doing business. Um, the government always gets theirs, and so you have to make sure that you're going to pay taxes. You're going to take money for goods and services. Um, it's just due diligence. And so in this presentation, and in the Dropbox file system uh, that I'm going to give you guys access to, this presentation will be in there. Uh, you can actually go into this presentation and just click on the hyperlink, and it'll actually just take you right to their site. Uh, where you, it's very easy, and it's actually a step-by-step -step process through the IRS. You can have your EIN number in literally two minutes. Um, they generate it automatically. You have the official federal document uh, right away in PDF. This is very easy to do, um, and pretty much to do business with a lot of other business organizations. They're going to ask you for an EIN number every time. Uh, they want to know what your federal EIN number is to make sure you're legit, you're doing the right thing. It's your business's social security number, basically. That's a great example. It's a social security number for a business. So, so you want to register your name with the state. It establishes your trade name. Um, it depends on the state you're in. Here in Wyoming, um, if you go to the state's website, you can register the trade name on their website. It's fairly easy. Same process. You submit a document, and it registers your trade name. Yes. I had a business that I started years and years ago, and when I decided to get out of it, does it still cost a lot to get to, what was it I was paying for monthly? I don't know, it was, <laughs> I was living in Montana, but it was out of uh, Delaware. Okay, I, it depends on the state probably. I know here in Wyoming, there's usually like a one-time fee for like sales tax licensing. Mm -hmm. Getting your EIN number, it costs you nothing. Um, I think the sales tax licensing here in Wyoming is like, like a hundred or a couple hundred bucks, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Do you remember, Melissa, have you done it recently? Um, it was a year ago, and I didn't have, because five years ago I had a, a different business, uh -huh. and I dropped my license, I guess, with them, but when I went back in and asked them if I could reinstate it, um, the lady didn't charge me when she should have, so I don't know what the price They're is. They're pretty cool right. about it. If the sales tax license office for Wyoming is in the, the state capital, I'm sure they have an auxiliary office here or something. Or it doesn't seem like it's that much, though. It's not that much. It's it's very affordable. Um, and, and they're super cool about it here. Like when I got my sales tax license originally in Cheyenne, uh, the guy set up an appointment with me. I went in, he sat down with me for about a couple hours, and he explained how to pay my sales tax. They, did it, they do it online, actually, uh, which I think like 90% of state organizations, you just pay your sales tax online now. You don't even have to send it by snail mail. Um, you can just log on, put your account number, and pay your sales tax. Um, 
Uh, my account pays my sales tax now, but when I was paying it, when I first got started, it usually took me about 15 minutes to pay my sales tax every month. Um, I pull the report from my system, go out, log on to their system, put the numbers in, and then Wyoming even gave me a discount to pay it early. Mm -hmm. So, but even now um, with a small business, like Crafters, you only pay once a year. That's pay at the end of the year. Even better. So under a certain level, just you're just going to pay it once it. a year. Yep. Yeah, you got to keep track. <laughs> and of course, you just build sales tax into your sales. You make sure every sale, people are paying their taxes. Just like, because then you're going to pay you your taxes. you have listed <laughs> on, the receipt, on the invoice or whatever separately as the sales tax? Yes. Or can... and, that's, and that's just good due diligence. Yeah, because um, then you have a record. Mm -hmm. Oh, and my laptop died. So Where's your charger? Plug, plug it back in, yeah. Yeah, I got a charger. <laughs> Womp, womp, womp. My battery's getting okay. really tired. I'm curious. Because you use it yeah, too much. Yeah, um, <laughs> sales tax. So, for like mine, I run everything through Etsy, my Etsy account, and I have a card reader. And so on there, it'll have an option of, am I charging this person sales tax? Because it sees that I'm in Wyoming. And so I'll tell them. Sometimes I'm like, uh, I'll shut that part off and just take it out of the total that I charge them. I know, but like, then I'm paying that out of my pocket. Yeah. My That's mom had a small business and she would do a lot of shows and stuff, and she wouldn't necessarily like itemize it out on her receipts. She'd just, you know, be like, "Well, I'm just It'd be gonna mark everything." It'd be included in her total. Yep, just mark everything up this much. But then you still have to keep track of it yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you just say, you know, oh, we did. Two thousand bucks at this show, so the state okay. gets you know five percent of that or whatever. Yeah. You know, <laughs> two thousand bucks, all damn good. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, okay. The state. The reality is, the state doesn't really care where it comes from, whether it's you or the customer. They just they care just that want they their get money. It. They get their percentage. Yeah, they're gonna get their money no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so okay, my oh, my business. Good. I was selling the purses I was making. Mm -hmm. I said I put nine on eBay and I sold five and then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I was still working and everything and I didn't have time to do all that. But <laughs> but it was fun. I think I still have an account. Do they keep it forever? What's that on eBay? Your your merchant account. Yeah, So I probably still have one on there. Yeah, you could probably boot it back up. And mm -hmm. It's on account. now, again. Our uh, our eBay store on uh, for this store, we actually sell used machines on eBay. We take trade-ins and we run it. Um, oh, it just booed right back up. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what we got to do with that. Though. Um, and we run that out of the Cheyenne store. Um, it just rolls right into our aggregate business. It's just like a piece of our store business. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still pay taxes on some of that stuff. And if the machines are actually sold in Wyoming, um, then there's like a there's a tax piece to that too. A local tax piece. To it. Um, so if you are going to do internet business and that sort of thing, you should ask an accountant about it for sure. Um, but in afford an account, I, my husband. Yeah, or you might know an accountant. Like my sister's an accountant. Well, like he was studying to be an accountant. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's good with math. And, and a lot of times, if uh, you ask, um, an accountant's going to try to find out for you because then they become mm -hmm. curious anyway, uh, and they want to know how to answer for sure. Is this uh, going to turn on? Up the signal. It's I don't know. The internet went out too. So I don't think so. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm shooting and stuff. Yeah, I think this got unplugged. Yeah, and I don't want to. Be I have Wi-Fi. I'm tired. <laughs> Can you get this thing to fire back up? Is it just no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But if you make so much, you have to declare it. Does it need Wi-Fi to talk to that thing? Uh -huh. Okay, exactly. so what, do I just unplug it plug it back in? I couldn't plug hear it from you. Your do you it and plug it back in? <laughs> yeah. Try that. Just hold on. Did we take the class together or something? There it is. We took this, well, I took this last There we go. Maybe that's where I saw it. That was very awesome. Okay. So, was in general, awesome? like with taxation, so uh, with the feds, with the state, local governments, if you go talk to them, you go to their website and check it out, uh, they're going to be very helpful. And what's that? I think it's good. It should just be gone. Um, 
they're going to be very helpful because the bottom line is that the government wants their money and they're going to set up resources for you to pay them money. Um, so as long as you ask questions, they'll get you going right away too.